How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're watching all of my videos, this probably seems a little strange to you, but maybe not if you've been around for a while. We're a little bit uh, out of sync right now with uh, events as they are unfolding. Currently, as I'm filming this, the top of the poop apartment is still drying as well as that side of the cupboard that will be over the diesel heater, the white one. And I just uh, ripped into New Denver to enjoy this because how can you not? It's just absolutely gorgeous. And uh, yesterday it rained all day. So I figured now's a good time to get out and enjoy it. Well, the wet stuff isn't falling and it's just, it's just absolutely beautiful down here. Whole bunch of people out enjoying this day. People walking everywhere on their bikes. There's even people down at the campground just sort of setting up their rigs. Campgrounds aren't even open. It's just, they're just down there for the day. Uh, and there's a bunch of people out on the water you can't see them, but their trailers are over at the boat launch. <laughs> so it's got to tighten up my, my phone mount here. I can feel it jiggling in my hand. So this video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to get back there to, well, it's not going to be a little bit different. Why do I say that? It's going to be the same as everything else, but it will hopefully be lots of fun and entertaining for you. Well, entertaining for you and fun for me to make, as I usually make my goal when I'm doing these videos. I'm going to stop at New Market in New Denver, grab some snackies for later this evening little bit of a routine I've gotten into. And then when I get back to the van, we're gonna do this as another sort of odds and ends uh, video. I've got little things here and there that need to be taken care of. Some electrical needs to be connected. Nothing like the absolute frustration that was the complete electrical install. Mm. I would love to get the DC to DC charger section connected, but I don't think I have big enough butt connectors. So we're also gonna have to make a shopping list for when I am back in Calgary in a couple days. Maybe I can grab some of that stuff at Princess Auto, because I, like I mentioned before, I still need loom. They didn't have any of that available at Silverton Building Supplies. And I would also like to get the diesel heater installed, so I know that that's out of the way. And by installed, I mean we're gonna test it first. We'll get it connected with its exhaust and its air intake and get it wired into the fuse box so that it is good to go. Oh, we're gonna have to get diesel. I've got diesel in the roto packs and grace. We good to go. I'm just hoping my standpipe set up with the new tank works. Fingers crossed. So just little stuff like that here and there to sort of start tidying up the build. And speaking of tidying up, the, uh, the garage is in an absolute state right now. There's cardboard boxes and stuff that can be burned. So we're going to start a fire, get rid of some of that and just get a little bit more organized. So when I come back here after seeing Brooklyn for the three or four days that I'm going to be in Calgary, uh, we can just sort of dig in and get the last few things done on the build because my plan is to call Cal Tire tomorrow and make an appointment for the following week to get my studded tires swapped out with the uh, Duratrax and because then I'm going camping with Lindsay. Camping season is rapidly approaching and I don't want to be going off on those adventures with studded winter tires. Uh, I hear that the snow is finally melted in Calgary and hopefully that's just the way it is. Although now I'm sure since I put that out into the universe, I've probably jinxed it. You got to get past May long weekend. Then you know that the snow is mm. Anyway, that's enough of a yap yap here. I'm going to get back into the Irish Pirate Queen go grab some snackies and get back to the homestead. <sighs> There's Grace. And from a distance, she looks really clean. She's not. She's quite schmutzy right now, but she's looking good. Hello, darling. <sighs> Someone knew you weren't here when I pulled up. Like I said, enjoying the beautiful day. All right, let's go to Newmarket. Sesame crepe. That's not what I went there for. I went there for the yellow corn tortilla chips. That's my new, my new vice, and I'm okay with that. But I saw this as I walked in, and I just, I don't know, it caught my eye. I like those, um, 
you know, those hard like sesame seed little like cracker cookie things you can get. Uh, like little like little rectangles, right? And they're hard, but they're covered in sesame seeds. This is kind of feels like that, but it's a little bit more malleable. And so I figured, why not give this a try? I haven't had breakfast yet. According to the information on the back, which never lies, it's got 14 grams of protein and 2% uh, of my daily intake of calcium and 14% of my daily intake of iron. Well, there you go. We won't talk about the sugars. How do you even get into this bloody thing? Is there no like little rip spot? Oh yes, there it is. It's 2024. How are we supposed to get into packages? Yeah. Ooh. Probably supposed to put something in it. Actually use it as a proper crepe. That's chewy. And sesame seedy. All right. Moving right along. <sighs> that was fine. I cannot eat all of that. It's very sweet. Very tough. I just started hurting my jaw. It was so chewy. Um, you'd probably be nicer treat if you like filled it with some sort of like berry filling and then maybe threw it in a frying pan or even a panini press maybe for a little bit kind of give it a, a melting texture anyway here we are back at a homestead back with a tiny home on wheels that is so close to being done yeah that's pretty much true uh first things first <clears throat> let's get that fire going <laughs> All right, we got our disposal fire roaring away and I've got the old wheel well box out here and you've probably already seen it installed, but this is where I'm going to pilfer the hinge for the top of the poop apartment. So I got to get this out. I did, like, looks like I did not even every screw on this, but that's because the hinge was closing on itself. Interesting. Well, let's zippy zap that out of there. It's so dark in this garage. I'm going to bring this out here to the light. Bring it to the light. Oh, ah, my impact driver's out here anyway. Right there, I was taking screws out of uh, that, which was actually the old platform for Penny's litter box. Bye bye. get some lights in here and I think what we're gonna do before I have this cabinet built is we're gonna take a peek at diesel heater that up here that over there this open up my hole ever since I cut this hole I've had it covered with tape but before I covered it with tape I hit all the layers with some Orange high hemp silicone. So it's been a, quite a few weeks. It's all rubberized now. Should be nice and safe. Perfect. So this bad boy is going to sit in there as she do. First, actually, well, here. 
Let's put her in there. Hiya. That's how she's gonna sit. Excellent. So we need exhaust, air intake, and then we get to figure out our whole vent situation here. And of course, for those that have really been paying attention, you know exactly, oh, that hurt my back, <laughs> what I have for that. And that is what I ordered off of the good old Amazon. <laughs> Hard to see in a bag, I know. It is a, what? Remember to pick that up, future Matthew problem. It's a vent, or a, it's a vent, it's a Y splitter. And it actually, you can also adjust the airflow in it, which is super cool. I can't, how do I show this, right? Where it goes, you can just, how does this work? I haven't, hey, look at this. More hot there, less hot there. More hot there, less hot there. You get it. Now what I need to do is find the ideal position for this so that I can still get at those. So that's what I'm gonna poke around and do. And I will get this stuff attached. I wonder if I should just crawl on my back and get the old muffler. No, because it's got the elbow on it. We'll just remove that guy later. For now, we're gonna assemble a new muffler with a new exhaust pipe, new uh, air intake, <laughs> and filter and all that good stuff. Oh, hey, this thing came with uh, zip ties as well. If this becomes too frustrating for me, I will not continue with the, uh, the diesel heater install because I have to run all new line uh, as well. And I'm probably gonna try to utilize the fuel filter this time. My old system didn't have a fuel filter on it. Been around the channel for a while. You know why. Uh, but yeah, I'm still going to use, so this heater came with this uh, this line, this fuel line. I know, no, we're not fans of this fuel line apparently. You install this fuel line, you get ridiculed and have all sorts of problems, I'm sure. But I have plenty of this hard nylon line. So this will be what I use. I just hope I have enough uh, vacuum line or whatever the hell it is, this stuff. Because that's the only problem with using the hard line. You gotta use stuff like this in order to connect that line to stuff like the standing pipe, the fuel pump, the fuel filter, all that good stuff. It's the only benefit this line has is it fits over all of those parts as is, but since the fuel line's gotta run outside and I am in minus 40 temperatures on the odd occasion in Alberta, it's probably not a good idea. We'll stick with what works. Well, that uh, little vacuum line that everything has to get connected with is in short supply around here. I could probably use that green nylon hose, I don't know if it's nylon, but that flexible green hose as a coupler, but it is quite tight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna steal vacuum line from my old system, but uh, my old tank still has diesel in it. So <laughs> moment of truth. Hopefully I can transfer from one diesel can to the next. Diesel's supposed to be good for six months, right? <laughs> Definitely hasn't been that long. Hold the lid off. Here we go. Nice and careful. Ooh. All right, spilled a little bit in here, but the silicone seemed to have worked and just had to use one of these alligator wipes to sort of sop up the spill. Obviously that won't be as big of a problem when I have an actual nozzle to go in there from the actual fuel like stations or from my roto packs. Let's see how this will go. Eh, it's climactic, probably because it's so moist. Anyway, I'm, <laughs> look at that. I'm so excited for how big this tank is. It's five liters bigger than my old one. I don't have to worry about leaks because of the standing pipe. I just pray it works. All right, I got these all over my fingers. Yeah, let's get rid of these. All right, so now what I have to do is, oh, I knew that was gonna happen too. Well, human error. Good thing we got that flex tape, boys. Now our door's gonna be black. It was open and I closed the driver's door. <sighs> Our new fuel door didn't even get on the road. <laughs> oh man, what a schmuck. Oh well, anyway, what I have to do now is uh, steal this stuff. A little vacuum line from there and then all over this pump. I wonder if I should just try to use it. I can't use this old pump because this fuel line 
here from the old system is actually smaller in diameter than the uh, the other hard line I have. So it's probably better to have this line be the same diameter for the whole system, which means I gotta yoink this off. <sighs> All right, here we go. Rick! <sighs> there, well, it's on. <laughs> it's, I, it doesn't look horrible, and at least now, I have experience with the flex seal tape, and I know that it's gonna work like a hot damn when I get to the Thule. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough left for the Thule. You don't get a lot of that $22 roll. All right, moving right along. It has been a minute, but just about to give power to the diesel heater. So no matter what happens, I'm sure there's gonna be issues because there always is. Um, regardless of that, no matter what, the diesel heater's wiring is done. So he's connected to the fuse box in there. You can see all of the brand new zip ties I'm gonna have to trim. Once we're done, you can see the red light down there means that there is no fuse. And I got everything reconnected here. We got line to the pickup, to the standing pipe, I should say. We got a bloody fuel filter. This makes me super nervous. If you know, you know. And we run down there to our pump at a nice 45 degree angle. And I drilled another hole in Lucky's floor for the fuel line to go out and up into the bottom of the diesel heater. Diesel heater is not currently mounted to the floor, but it does have an exhaust pipe and an air intake pipe on it. The air intake doesn't have a filter on it right now and the exhaust doesn't have a muffler, but that'll all come after we, uh, we try this out. So first things first, let's stick the uh, 20 amp fuse into the fuse panel. As soon as I do that, we should get power right, where is it? Here, you can watch the monitor. Put that over there. As soon as I put this fuse in the fuse box, this thing should light up. If I've done my due diligence. One, two, three, plug. Yay, look at me go. It's not my first rodeo. Although now I can't just turn the heater on. Um, the ducting's not installed yet either. That's to come. Um, I need to prime the line, which I have not done since I first installed my heater and I don't remember how to do it. So be right back. Gotta go see Google about a thing. Okay, super easy. So apparently to set this one into priming mode because it's all like it's different per the controller that you have. This one, I now remember, you just press okay and down. The same time it gives you H off. As soon as I press this up, the pump will start pumping and that's gonna prime our line because you can see our fuel line is all brand new. Now, I'm pretty confident in most of this, except for like places where I had to use these stupid collars. If this does work, those will be replaced with clamps like these eventually. I just don't have any more on hand. Where I'm more nervous about is um, on the bottom where the fuel line connects to the bottom of the heater. I ran out of this vacuum tubing because I had to add this bloody filter. Didn't have to, but I did. Uh, and I did use a section of this. So I've got this fuel line pumped into one end of this. It's a section probably, oh, I don't know, about yay long. So I got the white fuel line running in here and then the rest of it up onto the, the, the nipple <laughs> of the diesel heater itself. So. Well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I remember doing this the very first time when I installed this heater and it's just, it was fun to watch the diesel sort of start feeding into the line. I don't know how this is gonna work with this, uh, with this standing pipe. Let's see. Quality content. Quality content. Oh! Eureka! Holy Dinah science for days in Lucky 2.0. Here we go. And it's gonna fill up the fuel filter here. This is, as far as I can tell, that's the correct way you're supposed to do it. It sucks the fuel then through the filter once this gets filled. Oh yeah, it's dripping in there. Gonna fill up this whole little container. For those that might not know, since we have a minute now, the reason I don't like these filters um, is because I had two of them break on me in my original build. They weren't this style though. This feels a little bit more durable, like it won't crack. There it goes, there it goes. Okay, okay, okay. Oh boy. All right, all right, all right, all right. I don't see any air bubbles, which is great. That's awesome. 
Okay, then it's just wait for it to come out the other side of the fuel pump. Air starts to go. We got some air bubbles there. But now the fuel is going. I'm going to try to beat this thing outside. I don't know how much you're going to be able to see once I get underneath there. Oh, my back, my back, my back. Let's get under here. Oh, under our little pad. But watch from a safe place so you don't get smoked with diesel in the face. All right, it's going. There we go. Yeah, see, this is the problem. It's in that stupid little green sleeve. It's not quite mated. And the pump just turned itself off. It obviously thinks it's done priming. Not quite. I'm very worried it's gonna start leaking right out, right out there at the bottom. You can't even, right there. It hasn't started yet. <sighs> All right, well, so far in theory, we should be able to turn the heater on now and get some heat from it. Now that it's done priming, those air bubbles right at the end there though, man, I don't know, I tell you what. Let's see here, okay. So you can see that the line is all full of diesel fuel now. So now, just like normal, all we gotta do, it's still flashing that, I'm just gonna press okay. And we're going to get that glow plug working. Fan spins up. So far so good. What do we have this set to? Well, we don't need it at 35 degrees if it does work. All right, so now I'm just gonna wait for this to do its thing. I will come right back when the pump starts the pumping. All right, there we go. Pump has started pumping. I can hear that it, it sounds like it's ignited properly. So that's, that's good. I mean, honestly, I don't remember the state I left this heater in when I took it out of Lucky. I, I don't know what had happened most recently. So much had gone wrong with this heater, this chapter, I'd... <sighs> We have hot air, that's the question. Just open this up. There we go. We got hot air. We've got hot air blowing out. Got hot air blowing into here. Wait, is it closed? You gotta learn which way these have to be. Not quite. There we go. Oh yeah, a little bit. Ooh. There's a smell. I better go check the exhaust. There's a smell I haven't smelled in a while. Got a bunch of white smoke billing out under here. Nope. We're nice and clear. Our new exhaust tip is just exhausting away. Yeah, it's nice and hot. Oh man. All right. <laughs> and we're off. We're off to the races. Let's see here. So I gotta get to. All right, so there is hot air coming in there. This is none of this is attached yet. Like, well, it's attached, but I don't have uh, the, the clamps on them yet. Okay, got hot air going in there, and then is that closed? The pretty much. I mean, it's not 100% seal, but it's good. Awesome. Okay, well, the heater is heating. I am going to let it run for a little bit, and then I'm going to do some thorough checking. I still don't have very much confidence that that underneath there, that little green thing. I'm going to replace that when I can get some more of this vacuum hose for sure. But for now, we got lift off with a diesel heater. Huzzah! We getting up to temp. Well, I guess I better get my ducting properly ducted. I said what I meant. All right, so here is the new diesel heater ducting setup in Lucky. Unfortunately, it's unfinished. There we go, right? Bada boom to the Y joint, bada boom to the battery box, and bada boom to the main house. However, they've run out of hose clamps. <laughs> I guess I was lucky I had what I did. Uh, the old system was literally just two that I needed. So the extra parts, spare parts that I've had came in handy because now I got one, two, three, four, I'm gonna have five, six, but I don't currently have them. So I guess this seems like good a time as I need to just sort of leave this here for now and we will get to uh, putting those hose clamps on tomorrow and there are other electrical stuff that I wanted to sort of dabble with. I got to get cleaned up and then see if I can get these cabinets done. Did I? I don't know. Also, I'll probably get this sort of mounted the way I want it. I'm thinking just zip tie mounts uh, and hold this here so it's not rattling around in transit. And same with this, I have enough fuel line, I'm gonna have to untangle all of this, but it's going to come running down here and go underneath the bottle. 
and then down to the fuel pump to sort of control it and contain it and make it a little neater. So I'm going to do that. I'll show you all that in the morning. So in other words, let's just do this. Ha! I just went to start filming the rest of the last video, putting the countertops on. At least I'm still hopeful that's what happens tonight. Uh, and I was looking for my Dremel. There it is. Because I have to use the Dremel to cut that hinge that I took off of the old wheel well box. And inside this box, wouldn't you know it? Look at that. It's my old T intersection that I had. Why did I have a T? I don't remember. Oh, right with the hole. Doesn't matter. But look at all those hose clamps. Guess what I get to finish? No, I'm snap transition, unfortunately. But I can show you real quick. <laughs> I've cleaned up in here as well because <laughs> now i'm gonna get back in here oh, not without my old man pads that sounds a lot weirder than i thought it would there it is come in here oh gosh see i'm just i was getting the hinge ready to to dremel it but i did this over here i got the air filter on the air intake on the outside and I got all this sort of done. So we just, I went with these instead of uh, these zip tie ones. Like I used a zip tie mount for the, for the, f the filter because it's bigger. But with these guys, I just went with these little sort of like wire holders. That way it's not pinching the, the line. But then under there, one, two, right? And then all sorts of nifty and ooh, I missed a zip tie. I'll be back for you later. For now, I'm gonna put this up here. I'm gonna open this. Uh, I'm gonna open this and then probably put this back here. Huh. No, that's not. I need a way to keep this one open. <laughs> it's a work in progress still. That one? Gravy. It's hang on my wires. That'll do. That. <sighs> I need an adult. An adultier adult. Ha! Nailed it. And huzzah! Get this slug out of here. Nothing is cooperating tonight. <laughs> He just wants to be part of the show. Huzzah! We are all attached. Hose clamp up here, here. Everything is good to go. And actually, the tension that's being created here from this, like, go from here, kind of like that into there, is forcing this whole unit up off the floor. So happy accident. I'll keep my eye on this, obviously. Now that I see how easy it is to get under here, I don't think I'm going to be screwing down these boards. Not this one or this one. I'll just have them be removable and keep my trap doors because I like my trap doors. And yeah, but so far everything's nice and tight. And another little sort of like happy accident I wanted to mention with this Y joint and it going to the battery box. I know a lot of people were like, you're gonna cook your batteries. I, I don't plan on doing that. I don't enjoy cooked batteries. Uh, I've, got, I've got a very, I'm like a super taster though. I wouldn't, I wouldn't enjoy that. But I found that leaving this closed, since it's from Amazon and probably made in China, closed is not completely closed. So a little bit still gets through and that seems to be the perfect amount. Unless I find myself next winter in like really bad sub-zero gonna die Arctic temperatures, uh, I, would, I could open it then to get a little bit more heat towards the batteries to keep them comfortable. But that valve on there in the fully closed position still leaks heat and it's very subtle and I think that should be more than enough to keep the battery compartment nice and warm when it is cold. And then this one will just keep wide open at all times. And it works great. Hey, now I can turn this on. I was gonna let it run all night and then I discovered that like, because of the tension here, this kept popping off and it was just filling this box with heat. And I was like, all right, well, I won't let it run all night. But I think I will now and see if anything, uh, you know, completely detrimental happens overnight. So let's do that and then we'll check in in the morning. All right, it is the next morning. Let's go see if Lucky burned to the ground, <laughs> or more probably, <laughs> Lucky's fine. If we have any sort of leaks or anything, diesel heater's still running. That's a good sign. Wood nice and warm in here, and yes, I did get all of this done last night. Obviously, you know that if uh, you saw the last video, as I've been saying all this video. Oh yeah, it's nice and warm in here. That's a 10. I would have to have had a fan open for sure. And let's just see. Oh, this is my biggest point of concern is that stupid little green attachment. And no leaks. This is right underneath the fuel into the heater. So we are good to go there. I am still going to replace the connector with some proper vacuum line eventually. And now up here, 
We've got our white piece that will be the side of our cupboard, which was another thing that we started in the last video. So maybe we will give that a quick sand. And yeah, it's gonna be up against the cooler or the fridge with the ice maker. So we should probably hit it with some clear coat as well. All right, do that three more times, ah, two more times, and it'll be good to get installed. I also hit this piece with some clear coat last night. That's why it's a nice shade of oak. I don't know. Uh, oh, don't pinch the diesel heater control cord. My goodness. Oh, wait, it has to come up that way. It's not pinching it. It's just where it lives. There we go. That's better. All right, shove this bad boy. Ooh, you're gonna have to come over here, bro. There we go. Nice and tight like a tiger. I'll probably actually do this to this piece as well. Again, just because of the ice maker and the tendency to leak water down here when I'm slopping around. So maybe, yeah, maybe we will move the fridge to the bed <laughs> and we'll grab that piece, hit it with some clear coat. And then all that stuff is drying. It's time to cover up that insulation board. Hence the mahogany quarter inch we got which feels like forever ago. Yeah, I got the fridge moved and I gave this board a little bit of a sand just to mostly clean it up. There was a lot of schmutz on it. So we will put it down here and we'll see how much of a color change. It is there. That one is empty. That is garbage. Where is, ah, yes, as I do. All right, sir, seal it up. <laughs> it won't match, but hey, again, character. The color differences was because they were different types of wood. That piece is actually from my old bed platform, which I believe was pine. And the other one that I just threw in, there's what I got out here in BC, and that's fur. So obviously fur is the prettier wood, in my humble opinion. All right, so before we turn this off, I'm actually going to do the good old van life hack of cranking it up to max and letting it run. I'll maybe do it for 15 or 20 minutes, just because it ran all night on low. I guess while that's kicking up, we can talk about this really quick, because I just gave a sneak peek at the end of the last video. So this whole cabinet over here, yes, I liked the water station and the way I did it so much, I couldn't not have it. Uh, in a similar fashion. So it's obviously not a water station anymore. It is, in fact, Penny's poop apartment. Yeah, the last thing I added was this little flip out on this side. So this is about 18 and a half by two feet long. So this is a nice size board that doubles as a wall to cover up that space. And so when I want to change her litter box or sift it or whatever, I'll lift this up. We'll grab the litter pan out and Bob's your uncle. And then if I decide to sit here in my swivel seat to like enjoy some nightly entertainment or maybe do a live stream, we can have the laptop sit right here. These are those uh, flip out drawer supports or shelf supports that I got from D. Thank you again, darling. They hold up to I think it's something ludicrous, like 350 pounds. I wouldn't recommend putting anything that's 350 pounds, not on this, because it's just into my build. If it was like studs in a house, maybe that'd be a different story. Just like on the water station, I hit it with construction adhesive. Obviously, I didn't clean up my, after myself, so yucky, yucky, but that's okay. So it's being held uh, onto the poop apartment with construction adhesive and screws into the two by twos that run here, and then you just Oh, grab those handles, fold her back down. And then over here, of course, we used the hinge from the old wheel well box and the strut from same box to install this lid. Now the other side obviously flips out as well. I wanted it to have, be sectioned off. I don't know if I'm gonna bother with a strut on this side just because getting the stuff in here one-handed will be a lot easier than getting to stuff that's potentially in this larger compartment. That's a poop apartment. And if I'm being honest, uh, spoilers for the future, Another one of these, pretty much exactly, maybe a tiny bit shorter, is probably going to go right there, so it can flip up, so that I have a table. Um, if, I, if somebody's sitting on the bed, it can play cards or whatever. Or just when I'm in here cooking, I will then have a giant L of counter space. And maybe, 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 
Again, very similar to the original water station. I may put another flip out here, um, just because, yes, I could use this one to cook outside if I wanted to, but then if I need to get something out of the van, that's really annoying, right? So it might behoove me to put another one. Yeah, yeah. Future Matthew stuff. All right, we've got the diesel heater powering down. I need it to cool down so I can actually install the muffler. The exhaust is just a tiny bit hot. I just put a second coat on our whiteboard and now we got our piece of mahogany that I cut as well. So this is going to live right here. Fancy, fancy. So give the edges a little bit of a sand and yeah, I'm going to paint it white as well. It's a really nice looking wood. Don't get me wrong. I do like it. Maybe had I done the entire interior in mahogany, but uh, for now, yes, white to match the rest. Plus then once it gets mounted, that little black cat welcome sign will really pop. All right. So we got a coat of white paint on our board of mahogany. Unfortunately, that killed our last can of white spray paint. So I'll probably have to make a trip into Silverton if I want a second coat on that. Do I though? I could just hit it with clear coat and be done with it. Although it didn't quite cover everything. Future Matthew problem, because as much as I wanted to get that installed on the door today, if I don't, I don't, that's fine. So I actually leave for Calgary tomorrow morning, heading back there to see Brooklyn. And I'm hoping this is my last back there and then back here trip, you know what I mean? Um, like I've been doing, I'm hoping once I come back, I can wrap up as much stuff as I need and then get back to the city. Lots to do when we're there. That's a future Matthew problem for sure. But a couple of the other things I would like to do before today wraps up is maybe get this side of Lucky masked up and get a coat of paint on the barn doors and this here. I picked up two more cans of spray paint, so I think I have a total of four right now. Should be enough to cover the white that is left, because that way, when I'm gone, Lucky can just sit in the garage and, and dry. Although that's not a like huge, huge priority, I guess, because we, we, still, we will still have like three days when we come back. Um, okay, I need a minute to wrap my head around things. Hey Siri, start a timer for 20 minutes, so I know when to put on my next color clear coat for what will be the wall of the next cabinet. I don't know, like I said, it's gonna, it's gonna rain, which means there's gonna be a lot of moisture in the air, so maybe painting isn't the best idea, even if it's gonna be just sitting for a few days. I don't know, lots of things to consider. For now, let's get this muffler on our exhaust pipe. I attempted to do this last night, and it was just, I had started the diesel heater, so it was just, it was just silly business to attempt to do it then. I know a lot of people are like, oh, just forego the muffler altogether, who cares? For me, it's just too bloody loud. I just, I don't like how loud the exhaust is. Um, it's not about being stealthy, really, because um, I've never found myself in almost three years of van life needing to be stealthy, but just as the amount of noise my home is making, I don't personally like it. I'm not a straight pipe it sort of guy. <laughs> Obviously, I drive a Jeep Wrangler, come on now. And a Chevy Express cargo van. It will be nice though with this new position of the diesel heater, therefore the position of the exhaust. I won't have to mess around with that 90 degree elbow because we're nowhere near a tire right now. I'm just gonna need to get the uh, the bracket that came with this and we're gonna try to just attach it right to Lucky's disgustingly rusted shell under here. And then we'll just, it'll be like this. Maybe like that. The thing with this is I don't want it up in here because then exhaust can get trapped in the cavity that is like the body of the vehicle and the chassis and all of that. Um, definitely want it shooting out and down a little bit because the weep hole is at the bottom here. Stop tickling your weep hole. All right, and there we go. She is all mounted up. This is a little 5 16th nut, I believe, as well. It's a bolt and a nut that just holds it onto the bracket and just some self tappers that hold it onto the frame. You can tell by, not the frame, sorry, the body, but you can tell by the rust, it's not gonna last forever, but it should last us more than enough. Got a nice little downward angle here. It's shooting away from the house. And then I got the air filter zip tied up here and it's really nice. There's space all around where the air has to come in. So that shouldn't be a problem. And now we will just have to get the actual heater mounted to the floor eventually. And we got to silicone the hole where the fuel line's coming. And yes, I will put something around the fuel line so it doesn't get cut on the metal. <laughs> that is all done. And I just had the, like, I just wasn't even a thought, but added benefit with having the muffler on this side. I don't have to worry about where I park on at the campsite anymore. With the muffler on the same side as the cargo doors, like I've had it, it was always a concern, like how close am I going to be to somebody's tent and whatnot. But now, nay, not a concern. Everything's just working out. 
Okay, the last thing I want to do is stress myself out with a whole bunch more electrical, but I am curious to see. Um, I should actually, you know what? I didn't need my knee pads. Knee pads, you know what I mean. Yucky floor. Bring that in here. I'm curious to see if I can get my solar panels working. Like they're just unplugged, but I haven't given this new whoop, <laughs> Renogy DC to DC MPPT controller a real like shake yet like obviously these are the cables that go to my alternator they're not connected yet that's where i need like butt connectors and i don't believe they have those at silverton building supplies regrettably but i've also haven't gotten the solar panels working so the light's not even on so i guess like there the wires are all connected i guess we can just uh give it a shot yeah let's go plug those bad boys in they oh are just over here on the driver's side and I guess we can troubleshoot any sort of issues we might have. Wait, oh, shoot, are they here or are they back? They're back there. Yeah, I'm gonna need my ladder. Okay. Oh, gently, gently. All right, so it's just this here. Can't really see, but there's my two connections that I disconnected forever ago. We plug in and we plug in. Somebody's gonna yell at me and be like, you didn't disconnect X, Y, and Z and everything's going to explode. Well, if everything's gonna explode, it was meant to be. Right, let's come back in here and see, do we have a new light? We do not. Oh, yes we do. It's a red light. Oh no, we blew up the world. <laughs> All right, so this is what I was talking about. We're gonna do some troubleshooting. Although, I mean, it's kind of pretty. Blue, yellow, red. <laughs> Hang on, where's my battery monitor? <laughs> I should have just looked at my battery monitor. Okay, whoever decided that red is a good light to indicate something good, it's, that's a poor decision. Uh, that red light on, solid like that, just means solar's working and it's doing bulk charge. I was running around looking for the book of words for the, for the charger there, trying to figure it out, and it's just, mm, and I just, I finally went to the back page and it was like, solar, red, solid, bulk charge. I had to take my flannel off. I was so hot running around looking for the book. Okay, I cooled off enough that I could put my flannel back on. Thank goodness. All right, so I'm doing some reading and learning about this. I just intall, I just intalled. I did. I intalled it. It was in dire need of being intalled. I just installed the battery voltage monitoring wire that came with it, which is this guy right there, that little green. You know, what? I'm gonna turn the light on in a second. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but the lights, learning about them. So blue, that is the indicator that I'm on a lithium system. There's a button over here that you press and you can actually change the battery type. All right, so white, red is apparently flooded. Green is, I don't know, sealed or something. And yellow is something else. I like blue because we're on a lithium system. Ideally, I'd have this on the next one down, which is white. Uh, and that's user settings. So I'll have to take a deeper dive into that. This right here is the battery indicator light. Yellow means that it's at normal voltage. Green means it's full. Anything else, you probably got a little bit of an issue you should address. And then, as we just discovered, solar panel solid means bulk charge. We know we're charging because my battery monitor is flashing. And then once it's connected to the alternator, this will do the same thing. It'll be a red light when it is in operation. So all good things to know. When it comes to uh, the user settings, you need to have the app in order to set all those settings like I had with my old system. And for that, you need, I don't even know where mine is. I might have wound it up already and put it somewhere else. But it's that little BT1 module. That, regrettably, does not work with this model. I need to get the BT2 in order to do that. For now, we'll just leave it on lithium. Address that in the future. So now, this wire, this guy down here, this is just a positive and a negative lead, and I have them running to my positive, my positive and negative <laughs> bus bars, and that just apparently helps this thing know what the voltage of the house batteries are at so it can efficiently charge, whatever the hell. Um, one thing I've learned is down here, you can see where it says, IGN ignition. There is another plug that came with this that plugs into there and it runs out of there and it would go up to your an ignition switch or a, a tapped fuse or whatever to sense when the when the engine is on. Here's the thing with this model compared to the Rover that I had before. That ignition wire is apparently only needed if you have a smart alternator. So in newer vehicles that have that installed with Lucky's, I guess, dumb alternator. It's a little insulting. You apparently don't need that and the system will just turn itself on and, and knows when to do it. Um, I'm hesitant about that and I'm wondering if I could still use that ignition wire and wire into the little ignition wire I have. It is right here. 
I believe. This is, I think this is the one that runs to my little blue switch on my dash. So I can turn it on by, it, by itself and, and, and whatnot. But um, that definitely sounds like a, a problem for down the road. Ha! Ah, you thought I was going to say it again. Because like I said, I'm not connected to the alternator right now. And maybe this thing is smart enough. Uh, we shall see. But we'll do experiments like that later days down the road and back again. All right, so I got this all zip tied down now, looking a little bit better with those cables. Ignore that rat's nest over there. That's a future Matthew problem, ha ha. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to cut these ends off and take a little bit of this wire with me to Calgary so I know exactly how big of a connector I need. Before I do that, <laughs> ill advised to just start cutting wires. We'll come over here to our little circuit breaker back there and we're just going to, boop. So now there's no power running through the positive line at all. We are now free to cut off these ends. Grab this one here. Oop. And same with the negative. Boop. Aha. Come to Calgary with us, won't you? All right, we got our fuel line to come with us to figure out what size vacuum line we need. We got our wires. Boom, not gonna leave without those. Excellent. And I was actually doing a little bit of poking around here on the side of Lucky. <laughs> and another sort of happy accident just uh, presented itself. So I'm looking at the space, right? The space that exists between the door and the new poop apartment. That's a decent amount of space. Now, obviously we have our little recovery shovel multi-tool thing here. It's one of those things that you want to have it and not need it rather than need it and not have it. And I haven't had to use it. I think I used it once and that was just a clear snow when I was out at McLean Creek. This is something that could probably live better in grace and that would free up space and check this out. We can then do this. We could have our ladder right here. And it's hard to tell because I still have the recovery gear on but I'm pretty sure this is going to clear. And then, we can, <laughs> and then we just got to get some sort of system on here that holds this or even on here would probably even be better. Maybe it opens with the door and then we just take it off because I've never really used this space before. And I would much rather have this ladder here than at my head where it has been living at the back of the van. So I'm going to get this off and we're going to see what we can do about this. All right, we got the shovel tool off now. Put this up here. <laughs> now let's close the door. Bring it on in, Sally. <sighs> Buddy! Is the door closed closed? Is it closed closed or is it like super? Well, oh, it's a little tight. Okay, hang on. I don't, darn it, I don't think the door's actually closing. Hang on. Bring it this, we'll bring it over this way. There we go. <gasps> Bro, that not going anywhere. I don't even think I would need to mess around with anything. I might, it might be a little bit more annoying when I want to open this door, just have to grab the ladder. But I don't think I even need to mount the sucker. Cause I mean, any, any sort of mount I put on the door will add more width towards the poop apartment, right? I think just letting it live here is my go-to. Where's the tightness happening? Oh, the hot tightness is happening over at the back. Bring it out this way. There we go. Like, I don't think we need anything else. All right. Ladder storage. Done. <sighs> All right, I got diesel heater going again on full blast. I really want to put it through its paces and make sure there's nothing like detrimental happening. Although, let's get serious. Detrimental stuff will not present itself until we're back living in the van full time because that's just the way it goes. I've been poking around in here with the electrical, changing a few things up. I wound up the remote wire, which is that gray one for the inverter. That will have to get plugged into this guy because that's the inverter. But that's eventually, I'm gonna have to cut another board for it to mount to. I don't have the legs that came with it to mount. So I'm thinking like really heavy duty Velcro and just right up there or even 3M tape, although not being able to get it out easy could be a bad idea. I also reconfigured the fuse box here so I can actually put the cover on it. I thought the idea of having all of the positives and negatives exposed was piss poor, as they say. So I undid it, moved it over, re-changed the position of the positive wire and moved some stuff around and uh, just made it a little neater and tighter and safer in there. So whew, it's real hot right at this vent when it's on full blast. and. Yeah, still barely anything coming into the electrical box. Super cool. I love 
this little Y splitter. Such a good idea. All right, and I think that means it is, oh, let's see, let me put this down. There we go, nice, one-handed, very cool. Time to go into town, because I want to go to Silverton to get more white paint for our board uh, of mahogany that we just cut. And I need some beer, and I got to do the next entry in the Heartbreak series, which has already come out at this point. But this is how my schedule and life is. And we should probably fill Grace up so we are ready to go in the morning. And I just emptied my diesel rotopack in the Lucky on the other side. Oddly, it was completely crystal clear, which I found weird because the stuff yesterday that I had transferred from the old diesel bottle was the bright neon yellow bright neon yellow, but the color of yellow that I'm used to. So I don't know, I Googled it, it said it's normal. Maybe I just got it from a, a station that had clear diesel, I don't know. And there you go, the muffler is muffling. So all good things. All right, I'm gonna go for a rip and we'll catch up in a bit. Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? One, two, three, four. Yeah, your heart is a sun and it shines as it opens. Yeah, well, your heart is a sun and it shines as it opens. Yeah, your heart is a sun and it shines. As it opens Where your heart is a sun And it shines As it opens Yeah, your bones are the earth And they sing with the mountains Where well, your bones are the earth And they sing with the mountains Yeah, your bones are the earth And they sing with the mountains Where well, your bones the earth and they sing with the mountains. Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world you say, inside? Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? Why would you look outside yourself when you is a space that creates your horizon. Well, your mind is a space that creates a horizon. Yeah, your mind is a space. I should have known when the blinds were drawn. Nobody's allowed to drink on Mondays. <laughs> Moving right along. Okay, making a little bit of progress here. Oh, um, well, first of all, I used a Velcro strip to mount my extension bar here, my power bar, I should say, for my shoreline, and that is the battery charger plugged in down there. Now, I need to grab the base for this. Well, actually, you know what? I'm gonna leave the base. It's out there drying with a clear coat. I've got the cupboard piece here. It is now time to finally install this. Hiya, I believe that's the way. I'm gonna double check these measurements, and now, it will be time to put some construction adhesive on there. Not yesterday. Now. All right, there we go. We got our the opposite wall for our new cupboard here. So we got our construction adhesive all in there. We got, I added some more screws to the actual two by two. It was feeling a little floppy with only one in each end. And I got four screws on the outside here to hold it. And now we can measure this and we can make our future countertop. Do I'm excited. Maybe we can even get it cut and painted black before I leave. I can dry while I'm on my... Those aren't even. Lovely. Stay focused. Ah, couldn't find my phone. Got another fire going. And there we go. So, we got our countertop cut. In case I forget. And now it's just a matter of sanding and painting and then figuring out how we're gonna secure it. I'm thinking L brackets. Oh yeah, I didn't use L brackets on the bottom like I mentioned earlier that I might. I've decided to forego that. We just went with the two by two and the fine and dandy. But uh, yeah, L brackets on this side probably for sure because a two by two would interfere with the fuel line. So probably just L brackets on this side. Maybe a two by two here. 
And maybe I might, I'm considering, I might not have to, considering running a two by two like here and at the back just for more structural support. But we'll see, I'm not worry about that right now. My focus is going to be to sand and get a couple coats of that black paint on. Look at it all coming together. Keep all your chips and cereal and all that other sort of shit in there. Okay, and there she is, our future countertop for above the diesel heater. One coat on there, 20 minutes on the timer. And then we're just gonna continue to put coats on that throughout the evening. And we will leave it sit to dry while we are in Calgary. And we'll sand it and put a clear coat on it when we get back. And before uh, we wrap this up and before I take off tomorrow, I guess we uh, better see how much of a patch job we can do. And if we have enough tape, see if we have to pick up more because if it's expensive in Alberta, yeah, I can only imagine how expensive it is here. Come to me, let's do another repair. Oh, how exciting we get to get our ladder out from its new spot. Come here, you. Ah. Yeah, in retrospect, I shouldn't have put it away, but we needed to make sure it fit. Hopefully I can do this without having to pull Lucky out. Well, not that that's a big deal, but let's find out, shall we? I know there's a crack right about here. I should probably sharpen this blade on my leather. Come to think of it. You don't bump your head. Oh, oh! Well, I thought it was up here. It's on the side here. Okay, well, we're gonna do this. That stays over here. There we go. Oh! Well, it's going on. It's too sticky. I'm not gonna fight with it. Where's the crack end? Where's the crack end? All right, it's one piece of flex tape on. But that was the, uh... Quality content. Quality content. Okay, this one's a little bit of a bigger crack, so... Let's see how much we can do with what we have. Oh! Don't touch your fingers. That would just piss me right off right before I leave. Oy vey. And patched. Good enough for me. The stuff is sticky AF. It ain't pretty, but that's okay. That's kind of our MO around these parts. Boom. Don't leak you. Oh, and still a little bit of tape left. Not much, but cool. Don't have to buy any more. Thank goodness. It was like $22 for the one roll. <sighs> but anyway. Yeah, I'm not. I was, I was I'm debating covering up these windows and, and everything, but then I have to cover the tire and... Oh, it sounds like a future Matthew problem. Nope. I think that's good. <laughs> I have to come back here and get my camera. I'm cleaning up. Tidying up, starting fires and all of that. Well, more like just keeping the fire going. And uh, I was putting some of my dad's tool away on his shelving unit out there. And look what I found. Look at this. More fuel line with vacuum line. I really spread out while I was here. <laughs> so I don't know if this is a right now thing, getting under there and swapping that, but... Yeah, probably. Either way, we can take that off of the list at Princess Auto. Okay, I swapped it out because of course I did. So our, uh, our old connection is right here. It's a good thing I did it. These stupid little things that came with the Chinese diesel here itself where you just pinch to release tension, make it bigger, and you let them go and they tighten up. Garbage. One was already like completely slid off. So if we look up under here, you can see right on the fuel line, we got our black vacuum line. I'm probably driving people crazy if it's not actually called that, but don't care. Here's what I've learned. The fasteners that tighten the vacuum line down are seven millimeters. Cool. I can't get to the topmost one from under here because the floor is too thick. I can't lift the diesel heater up high enough because I've got that white board on the cupboard. So two possible solutions, either I take that whiteboard off and I do cut it like I mentioned previously so that I can constantly remove that when I need to get to the diesel heater. Or I just look for an angle for my seven millimeter socket. I'll probably start with that when I'm in Calgary. I'm not gonna worry too much more about it tonight. I can see myself going down a rabbit hole right now and I don't wanna do that. I'm getting hungry, evening is rolling in and we got other things that we could be doing like resting before a long drive tomorrow. So 
I'm glad I found the vacuum line though, and it's uh, done. It's tight enough where I could probably fire the diesel heater up to test it, and that's probably what I will do. Um, but yeah, for now, I'm gonna go put another coat of black on the cabinet topper, counter by any other name, and that's it. That's it for me for today. some dinner for you. Oh. <sighs> hey, I gotta leave tomorrow morning, but it's the last one, hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> and then we'll be back in our tiny home on wheels, okay? Mm. <sighs> I need a shower. Are you sweaty? I smell like fire. Done like dinner, and I need to have some of that. So I'm gonna leave this one here, you guys. Until the next one, just go out there, be happy, be creative, be yourselves. Most importantly, be positive. And remember, only dead fish go with the flow.